In this video, I'll show you how to install and program Hunter's standard battery-powered timers called nodes. Hunter nodes are commonly nicknamed hockey pucks. Nodes will work with pretty much any DC solenoid. Most valve manufacturers have their own proprietary DC solenoids. This comparison sheet linked below covers the benefits of the different battery powered timers that Hunter makes, so I won't go into that here. I've also covered the differences between the standard node and the Bluetooth model in my previous video linked below, so we'll just focus on installing and programming the standard node here. Before you begin, you'll need to install two 9 volt batteries. You can then program it on your workbench or your tailgate before you connect it to the DC solenoid on your sprinkler valve. The node won't work with the standard AC solenoid that comes with the sprinkler valves. It's easy to tell whether the valve has an AC or DC solenoid because the AC solenoid wires are the same color. The DC solenoid wires are black and red. Once you get the batteries installed, then you can press the center button to activate the display. First you'll see the time come on and then you hit the enter button again and the date will show up. You just use the plus or minus button to change the year the way you need. Then you hit the right arrow button, the month displays, you change that the way you need it. And then you hit the right arrow again and you have the day of the month show up. Next is the AM PM 24 hour option and you can set that Next, you have the hour and minute. Use the plus or minus button to change those. And next is the first start time. Typically, most people only use, need to use the first start time, but there is four available per the three A, B, and C programs. So just use the plus and minus button to get the time set the way you want for the first start time and then you use the right arrow button to get to the second and third and fourth start times as needed. Keep in mind that if you have a node that has more than one station on it that the stations will run sequentially per start time so you don't need to have a start time for each zone unless you're specifically wanting each zone to start at a different time of day. Once you're done with the start times, then you hit the enter button again, and now we're on the run times. On this particular model, we only have one zone, so we only have one run time to set. So we just set that to what we want using the plus button, and then hit enter, and now we're on water days. Those little down arrows are pointing to the days of the week that it's actually going to water. So you use the plus button to uh, say yes to the day and a minus button to say no to the day. Once you're done with setting the water days and you hit enter again and now we're at seasonal adjustment. The seasonal adjustment is kind of a joke with the single station node because what it's for is when you have more than one station on a timer instead of going in and changing each of the run times throughout the season to adjust it for the heat and cold of the season you can just use a seasonal adjustment and it changes all of the stations across the board by a percentage so you can increase it all the way up to 150 percent or down to 10 percent But again, with the single station, it's not necessary to use this. Okay, and now that you have that set, then you hit enter again, and the display is going to show off. That means that the node is turned off. But you hit the enter button again, and it will get rid of the off mode, and it'll show the time display, and that means that it's in the run position. And you're done. With battery-powered timers, the red wire is what we call the hot wire, and you'll have one of those for each one of the zones that are on the timer. The black one is the common wire, and you're only going to have one of those. 
So each of the solenoids will be wired to the black, and then each solenoid will have its own red wire. And you want to make sure you use watertight wire connectors with those. Keep in mind that the node does not need to be installed at the valves. You can actually use 18 gauge wire to run it up to 100 feet away. So you could have it mounted or set uh, somewhere that's more convenient uh, on your porch or in a shed or something like that uh, that makes it more convenient for you. It is best to keep it out of the sun though for longevity's sake. To save battery life, they time out pretty quickly when you're programming them or simply operating them, so you better know ahead of time how you want to program it before you begin. I've created a simple worksheet linked below that you can download and print out. The operations on the sheet match the order of the operations on the timer. Just fill in the blanks and you'll be ready to program the timer. Even though the node is technically waterproof, I've found it best to keep the rubber cover on the node when you're not using it. The node is compatible with these rain sensors and these wind sensors. That's what these yellow wires for, but with the node you can only have one or the other. To install it, you simply cut this yellow wire in half here and then splice the sensor onto those wires. Well, I hope this helped you install and program your standard node timer. Remember that all the items I mentioned on this video are available on my resources site linked below. Remember your free downloads to help you with your irrigation system. Please like and subscribe to this channel and hit the bell to be notified of new videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.